What's up, guys? Welcome back to Feed the Beast Interactions. Uh, between episodes, didn't do too much. Well, I didn't do a lot of progression anyway. Made this Flux chicken. All stuff that we already had. Really simple. And these eggs just compress into Flux. And we're keeping a thousand Flux crystals at the moment. And I just did this because passiving the Flux crystals just lets me get a bunch of cables. Um, these blast furnaces are now fed from export buses at the top, one for nitrogen and one for hydrogen at the moment. I still have an oxygen one downstairs that I'm going to move up here soon. And I did upgrade these to canthal coil block because we made canthal last episode for the thermal centrifuge. I stuck a few extra ME terminals around. The ME system does import everything from our oil processing and also our blast furnaces. And I made up nichrome, which is just chrome ingots and nickel ingots in the blast furnace. And this will be our next coils, and I should have enough for at least four blast furnaces, I think. So we'll get that set up some point soon. The other thing that I did was I set up this other ME controller and the way the network now works is this controller just takes the channels coming from these P2Ps and spreads them around the base. So rather than this was at like 18 channels or something before, now it's just showing four. And rather than having a limit of 32 channels, the four channels that are on this is 200, no, 128 channels in total so it just gives us more channels around the base and um so there's a p2p down here to service this room there's one here to service this room and there's one here like for the blast furnaces and anything else on this side of the room and then there's another one over here all the machines on this side of the room and just make sure that we won't have any Issues running out of channels anytime soon. You may also notice the blood altar is gone. It's not like sticking halfway off the building looking quite as bad anymore. And I also built a big extension out here, which we'll go and take a look at from downstairs. This will be going soon too. I've already got a new space for it. I just haven't moved it yet. So I expanded out this room a fair bit. I haven't moved anything yet. I think I'm just going to move things about as we upgrade them. because so we're going to do magic today. Maybe even the next two episodes. We'll see how much we need to do. But this will just be our Thorncraft room. Uh, we'll probably put the multi-blocks that need mana and stuff in here as well. Maybe. I'm not entirely sure. We'll see as and when we need them. This is going to be our Batania room. Um, I like the glass letting the light in from outside. And you now as we put stuff down, I'm hoping to like put some grass and stuff in here. Maybe even because the overgrowth seeds are craftable in this pack, I think. Um, they're not terrible to craft. No, they're really not that bad to craft, so I'll probably craft some of those because they increase the efficiency of our producing flowers, I believe. And when we move all of this in here, we will bring an ME uh, P2P under here. And if we continue using the Petro Petunias, these will actually work with our diesel. So there's some normal diesel in them at the moment. I'm pretty sure these will also work with the infuse nitro diesel and just produce a bunch of mana. I will get this automated, but probably going to wait until we get to the next spreaders for that. So that's something I'd like to do today. Here's the new blood magic room. The altar just about fits in here. And this is planned out all the way up to the highest tier. It's all set up the same way as it was before. And underneath it, this glass is ugly, but it's the cheapest witherproof 
and lightproof block that I could find. And you can't see it most of the time anyway, because it's underneath a blood altar. So underneath here is going to be where we are going to do the infinity dust and hopefully also wither automation, which is why I'm using witherproof glass as well as darkened glass. And this is close enough to the blood altar. If the master ritual stone is one block under the glass, which I think it will be, uh, that the very top of the ritual is on the same level. Might be two blocks under, but either way, they'll still be close enough to this altar that it can use it as the output from the culling ritual. And this will be much better than how I had it before, where there's just like that thing up there. But the first thing that I want to work on today is I want to look at getting rid of this, these stairs and this platform. I thought it was cool when I built the stairs all the way up there and I was like, oh, we'll build a big tower. But I don't like it anymore. This is going to be our new astral sorcery area on the roof here. But in order to get enough starlight to do the difficult crafts down here, we need to upgrade our altar. And also, there's a way you can get a collector crystal to power your altar with lenses. And I don't really remember how that's done, but I want to get that set up. So the first thing we're going to do today is work on upgrading our altar. So we still have two altar upgrades to do. There's first the celestial altar and then the iridescent altar. I also want all of these constellation papers. That'll be really nice. But once we have this, we can also, you know, look at maybe crafting this mantle of the stars. And for one, it has chaos immunity, which will be useful when we fight the chaos dragon at some point. But secondly, there's a version of it that fl you, uh, gives you creative flight. So this will probably be the source of flight for us as well. It really just isn't that difficult. The only thing we don't have here is resonating gems. And we need near a distant doesn't alter as well obviously but these things like aren't that far away so first things first we'll need the celestial altar and this is a rock crystal four chisel marble four aquamarine yeah, aquamarine and three sterling silver plates hey there we go so here's our celestial altar we can't craft with it yet because we need to upgrade the multi-block Okay, and here is the multi-block complete. We also got another constellation paper, which is for Horologium. I have no idea what that one does. And I think I want to focus on upgrading the altar for now. So the next level needs a bunch of ruined marble, so we're going to have to craft that up. We also can't craft this without the resonating gem. So we're going to need the terrest terrestrial agglomeration plate. We have flawless lapis. We have unstable mana. Okay, so in order to continue with this, we're going to need oil crystals from blood magic and terra steel made right in the blast furnace with unstable mana, mana diamond, and a mana steel ingot. So we can, we can make all of this. Okay, so I set up the other two blast furnaces, swapped all the coils out for nichrome, and I should have everything that we need to make terra steel. Unstable mana in there. And there we go. And here's our terra steel ingots in the system. The first ones anyway. So I just went and uh, raided some dungeons on the moon, because I wanted some Nocturnal powder. And I figured it'd be easier than making it up myself. Oh wow, it got a really good haul though. Bunch of iron chest upgrades. Glitch infused sword. Seems pretty nice. I don't know how much damage it does, but some titanium, two tier three storage modules. Bunch of stellar alloy and stainless. Sanitizing soap, see silky jewel, some rooting nodes, Nivorcio wand. Bunch of Thorncraft stuff, some overgrowth seeds. I wanted those for the Batania area. Nocturnal and Illumination Powder. Healing Fragments. Uh, two Ender Chests. I really needed these. 
another fluid transfer node, a bunch of translocators, most of a set of elementium armor, some creative modifiers, quantum tank, this air sigil that'll let me fly with the elytra, some item collectors, storage components. Like, it's really worth going and doing the dungeons. Okay, so moving on to Demonic Will. Now we'll be following the guide from the quest book to automate it, which is by someone on YouTube called Muzzle Streams. It's a really good video. If you want to do this yourself, I recommend that you go and watch that. Um, I will talk about what I'm doing while I'm doing it, but I can't explain it anywhere near as well as he did. So. So to start off with, we have a Ritual of Peaceful Souls. I've just dug out a chunk so I could see what I'm doing, and I'm just working pretty much in the middle of the chunk. The will is chunk-based, so I think I want to keep everything within a chunk. And I think we'll get extra crystals, so I should be able to use those to empower the area where my ritual of culling is going to be, which will let me kill bosses. So if we build this ritual first, and then turn it on, and it should start spawning passive anim animals for us. Here's Gathering of Forsaken Souls. Okay, and then we start this one. And this will slowly damage all of the mobs in here. Which should start producing a small amount of will in the chunk, I think. Or maybe it just helps the crystals grow, I forget exactly what it does. This one is Resonance of Faceted Crystal. We are definitely going to have to mute the sounds of everything dying in this chunk. So now we can start this ritual. And we can put a demon crystallizer down. Now I think before we can use this we also have to... By the way this was just a hellfire forge, stone, lapis and some glass in a hellfire forge. It did cost a load of will to do all of this so I had to go out and collect some more. We need to put will into the chunk. I think we need five of these. And then we can put our tartaric gem in there. And that should start placing will into the chunk. And now I think we just have to wait for the crystal to grow on this crystallizer, which I think takes a while, I think he said for the first one. So now all the crystals are grown. We will break them all. And that should give me seven of each. And we will go ahead and throw them into these barrels. And just lock them. Okay, and then we take this ritual apart. I don't think I took the disassembler yet. This ritual apart. But we leave the others intact. So we've just placed another master ritual stone here in the gap that was already here. And we're going to build the crack of the fractured crystal here. And then hopefully that will activate. Yep. And what that will do is whenever a crystal is fully grown, it will shatter off. And then when I created the greater Tartaric gem, we got this demon will crystal cluster. This is one of the uh, clusters we want to grow. We wanted to make the others, how much will would we need? We need 1200 and it drains 100. And we only have a thousand at the moment. So let's just drop a couple of these into here. 
I should put some will into the chunk. I'm just looking to see how many we get from the two that we put in. We've at least doubled. So yeah, it looks like if you don't mess with it, you get a significant amount back for what you put in. So what I'll do is I'll auto put these into here and I'll only activate this one. And then once we've got a decent amount of will in the chunk, I will start charging a Tartaric gem. Because this one almost has enough to start doing the crafts. And then I should be able to grab four of these. And then that will give me the vengeful. And then I'll just pop this out and put these in here and these in here and some more of these in here. And I should be able to put this back in here, a bunch more will. And as you can see, this is getting us a bunch more than we had originally. So I'll just put a item collector and wire all of this up. And now the system is fully automated. It's just inserting all on different channels and extracting from here. And then they will insert on the same channel and extract from the chest. And this just has a filter with all of the world crystals in them. Okay, so I set up most of the infinity dust farm again. I still don't like how this glass looks, but I don't know exactly how spawning the wither is going to work. So I want to do it in there as well. So it can be killed by the ritual. I know that if we're maxed on destructive will, it should cost 50,000 LP and just instantly kill it pre-explosion. So I shouldn't actually need witherproof blocks. And I mean, if it did blow up, at least at the moment, it would destroy the ritual. Although I put another roof across that or something. But for now, I'm going to keep it because A, it needs to be dark in there and this doesn't let light through. And B, because it's witherproof, if I do spawn withers in there and there's a problem, at least they probably won't be able to get out of the box. Because even if they destroyed the... There's two places where the glass isn't complete because there's blocks that need to access the chamber. There's one down there and one up there with the item collector, and I don't think a wither could get through that. So if there was a problem, it would at least limit the damage that they could do to the base. Now, unfortunately, I spent a bunch of LP on the Peaceful Souls ritual before I set this up. So I don't have enough for the Falling Tower anymore. But it shouldn't take too long. It's been ticking back up pretty regularly now we've got this ritual. I went with the Inhibitor Obelisk as the method to stop the Enderman teleporting in the end. We've progressed far enough that I could craft this pretty easily. And for right now, we're not changing these Grinds of Infinity into the Infinity Dust. I do have some of this on standby, like in my system, just in case it runs out. But we have six stacks there, plus another nine stacks there, so 15 stacks. And I'd just quite like to collect the dust for a while and see whether we can get enough for the Nightmare Chicken. I think it's like a thousand-ish infinity dust. Friends of infinity, should I say? Now that the Will Crystal Farm has been running overnight, we actually have a pretty nice amount of... Uh, crystallized wool. So we can use this, I think it's the venue for world crystals, to kill the wither. And I'm just going to leave this running passively and these barrels should start to fill up. It's also really nice because if I want to fill up my tartaric gem I can just put it in here and it charges. It does drain will so I have to make sure that I've got enough of this will crystal before I do it. It's why I've got a bit less of this one than most of the others I think because I've drained it into the tartaric gem. We're trying to make the terrestrial agglomeration plate. And we have terra steel now. And we do have the flawless lapis. We have the unstable mana. So the last thing we need is this raw demon eye. Uh, it looks like we only need to do one craft, which needs four polished raw stone, which needs four raw stone. We can make 16 of that with one demon world crystal. So there is our raw stone. And then we craft it once to get polished raw stone. And then mix that with glowstone for the raw demonite. 
and we're gonna need one of those. And that is everything we need for the terrestrial agglomeration plate. And looking at our Batania room, what I'm thinking is we put mana generation somewhere in the middle-ish. Maybe put the portal against this wall. And then we can have room for things like runic altars. I don't know if we'll need more than one. And I think we'll put the terrestrial agglomeration plate over in this corner. Now this is a multi-block. Very simple one though. Four blocks of lapis. Five living rock. And then the plate on top. Now this does use rather a lot of mana. So I think we're going to want sparks for transferring mana with this. Mana to this. And it's going to make using our rune culture a lot faster. Now sparks themselves are very easy to craft. Just gold and pristine blaze matter and liquid starlight. We have all of these things, but in order to you know get the dominant and the recessive augments, we do need pixie dust. So we will need to make the elven gateway first. I know there's a quest for the core. I'll have to look up what the rest of the multi block is. It wants us to hold a mana pole to unlock it, but we probably need one for this. It gives us the that's a mana pearl, two simple power catalysts, unstable mana, and living wood. So it's all stuff we've crafted before. And this should be everything for our portal core. There we go. And there's glimmering living wood. So the last thing that we need to build our portal is the Natura Pylon. We get one for free for crafting one for the quest. And first of all, we're going to need this mana pylon. And this is rose gold screws, illumination powder, mana steel, and orium. We have everything for this. Okay. Next up for the infusion, we need the mana pylon, eye of ender, mana diamond, four living wood, and two emeralds. And just a little bit of uh, this. And there's one of our nature of islands. And just to pop that above the mana, mana pool. And we'll grab the second one from the quest. Pop that above the other one. Now I think it takes about half a mana pool each to open the portal. If I remember correctly. So I'm probably going to wait for just a little bit more mana before we do it. Yeah, so we should have everything. Should be enough mana now, I think. Okay, I think we just right click that. I had way more mana than I needed. Yeah, I think it is. Okay. I'm going to throw some mana still in there. For this elementium. And some living wood for the dream wood. Make two elven mana spreaders, and then with these stellar alloy plates, we can make Gaia mana spreaders. Uh, I'm not entirely sure how fast these are. I don't know if I'll get away with one. Probably not. Yeah, so yeah, even with the potency lens on this guy, a mana spreader can't actually keep up with one flower. So we will actually need to upgrade these even more for them to keep up with the Petra Petunias. But these don't take fuel when they're full, so... It's good loose. And yeah, these are filling up way faster now. Okay, so that we can start making our spark augments. First of all, we're going to need Ruins of Fire. These are Mana Steel, Nether Bricks, Gunpowder, Nether Wart, and Mana Powder on a runic altar. Let me just grab 
one of these spreaders. And there we go. At least this stuff crafts a lot faster now. Next up we need some runes of earth, which is mushrooms, mana powder, mana steel, block of coal, chiseled stone. I think any stone works. And the last thing we need is pixie dust, which we get by throwing mana pearls into the portal. Now we can grab some more mana steel. I'll just do these in a crafting table for simplicity's sake. So we're going to want for now two submissives because we have two mana pools that we are filling. So recessive, these will spread mana to other sparks. And then to dominant, which will, these two will take from the recessive pools. Uh, we need two for the portal. Um, and I want one for the altar, one for the agglomeration plate. And this should be enough to make, I think, 10. So we will want one on the agglomeration plate, one over each of these mana pools. I think we can, no, you can't put one directly on here, we'll have to use a mana pool and a spread over for that. But we will put two on top of these for now. And then for our dominance, we're going to want, that's a little awkward. Um, is this portal going to close? I guess it doesn't matter, I can always open it again. We'll put dominance in both of those. And then we'll throw a dominant in there. And then I will craft up another one of these mana pools that we can and another spreader that we can have right next to this. And the other thing I'm gonna want are some potency lenses. These are just runes of fire and mana lenses, which are really easy to craft. Okay, now that we have all of this set up, we should be able to I'll just take the magnet off first. Pop these on here. And here's our first resonating gem. Also, I played around with the sparks a little bit. And it seems like it's best to just not use the recessive augments and just to have normal sparks on these and then put the dominant ones in the pools that I need mana with. It seems to work out probably the best. Now everything gets the mana it needs. And with that we will end today's episode here. We've got a bunch done. Batania is like pretty much set up for everything now. We just need to, I think it's just the Gaia that's left really progression wise for Batania. Um, our LP pool is ticking up nicely. We'll have to re-automate the Infinity Dust, but that's not difficult at all. What on earth is going on over there? Um, so yeah, so we'll next episode we'll finish off upgrading the Astral Sorcery. I think we have everything now apart from the Celestial Crystal. Now I'll craft up a Faucet Resonator and see whether we got lucky enough to have any large Starlight pools around here just to make it a little bit easier to move it down. I don't foresee it being a big problem though. So next episode there's a couple of Thorncraft upgrades that I've wanted for ages now, I just haven't got around to. You know, like automating the Crucible. So thanks everyone for watching. Um, you got any feedback, comments, leave them down below. And I look forward to seeing you next time. Bye bye.